This one is more kind of on the reverse side of that is Colin speeding up with his forehand, one of his favorite things, and me kind of defending both my line and my chicken wing area. Basically, a standard um, attack off the bounce with the forehand from the right side and uh, all the spots I need to be defending. So for this one, what we normally do is I simulate a uh, cross court dink with something like this, and then allow Colin to speed it up. Uh, again, I like to start off with a combination of spots, not, not too many combinations uh, at once, because in that position you can put it in three or four different spots that are good. But I like to start off with one or two in order to practice more of the motion of things. And then once we're uh, good with the motion, then we'll start putting it in different spots to kind of combine that with uh, actual hand speed and recognition and all the other things we need to be focusing on. But I do like isolating to begin with. So let's start with uh, line first. So I'm gonna give him this ball right here. He hits a line and then I'm hitting kind of a, a counter here. And one other thing I'd say is important when practicing something like this is you don't want to be hanging out here just doing this. You do want to combine it with the full movement, at least when you're isolating it, that you're still about here where you normally would be and you're combining it with the movement slash lunge. For me, it's usually a lunge, something like this. I don't really like isolating so much that you're not needing to move at the same time as hitting. So movement with the hitting is still very important. On the counter, since I'm only hitting from one spot, I like to try to mix up where my counters are going as far as speed, uh, how down I'm getting it, the line, more of the middle. Um, so there's at least three or four different things I can be practicing on his one attack here. If you want to make it more difficult for yourself, you can just put the dink a little higher, something like that. And that gives Colin a, a better ball to attack and makes it more difficult for me even if I'm still in that one spot where I'm countering. This is one I've been working on for a while, so I'd say this one is um, certainly worth going back and, and getting more reps in, but I'd say normally I'm pretty confident with, with this specific one, the two-handed backhand. What I am actually working on right now is a little more of defending multiple spots, so that we'll do that next, where uh, Colin's attacking line, he's attacking my body, my chicken wing, which has a combination of countering with the two, the one, or getting to the forehand, which the differences between those obviously makes it more hard, more difficult to, uh, to get to all of them. So now we're going to be able to transition to where Colin can attack wherever he wants as far as left and right goes. Oh, missed the first forehand, but I was on it. So now, yeah, he can attack line, he can attack chicken wing, more towards the middle, which makes it more difficult for me. Yep. Personally, I do think it is great to, uh, to play it out. Uh, of course, if you hit a counter to where they pop it up, I mean, I don't usually smash the next one, but uh, I do think it's important to, after counter, play out some semblance of a, of a real point and how that would work. Something that makes uh, this drill difficult and I think really worth doing is that normally in most situations when you're getting attacked, you're kind of looking for one thing, meaning you're looking for a backhand counter or a forehand counter or a two-handed or something like that. You kind of need to cover all three of those. So it's often either two-handed backhand stretch or even one-handed when you really need to block it or reach. Uh, the one hand are kind of covering the body usually, and this is to get it more down. And then you can kind of cover the chicken wing with forehand here or the backhand here, but usually it's kind of forehand here. And then oftentimes you even need to cover further out, which is middle, uh, which is a full forehand. And it's just, it's difficult to cover all those spots at once. Uh, and that's why I really think this drill is worth doing to where you get used to transitioning from one to the next uh, off of the same type of attack, or at least the same ball that you're giving them where they have multiple spots to go on. Yeah. 